Hi, my name is Dave Breiner, and I'm an application consultant for Synergist Technologies. Welcome to part one of two on how to more effectively utilize my iLogic parts and assemblies. I'm always trying to find new ways to use iLogic and make it easier to utilize iLogic parts and assemblies that I've created. I use these parts and assemblies to reduce creation time and to automatically add the I properties that are important to me, in my case, description and material. In this two-part series, I will first like to review how I built my iLogic parts and the method I used to include the description and the material of the part in the iProperties. In the second part, I will show you how to use iLogic design copy to make the parts and assemblies unique. As far as creating simple iLogic parts for plate, pipe, and tubing, for example, I certainly could have used content center parts for some of them, but that would have worked would require me to save the part as a custom part, then open the part in order to fill out the description and select the material for every one of the parts that I have created. In some cases, it does not take a great deal of time, but I decided to spend a little time up front in order to save a good deal of time down the road. So I created the parts in iLogic that I believe will save me the most amount of time. Let's start with a simple demo on how I use iLogic parts in an assembly. I will begin by opening a standard assembly and I will save this as just one. I will go to my place component and place an iLogic component. I have a folder that contains all of the iLogic parts that I've created and uh, I'm going to slide down and we'll start with the most basic of all, just a simple plate. You'll see I'll just place the first instance and I have a form that opens to help with my sizing and I will just add uh, some type of generic size and I will select a pull down for material and you'll notice my description does not op update automatically however if I say okay it will update the I properties but let's say apply and we'll see that the part automatically sizes and my description now um, appears just the way I want to see it so how did I um, if I go to my I properties over here you'll see that my description is the way I want it and my material is as selected. So let's open this part and take a look at how I put this together. You'll see that I just have um, name parameters, length, width, and thickness, and I have a user parameter called plate material and in there I have a multi-value list with the materials that I would like to see applied uh, to this part. Now these materials are custom materials that I have created and the way you see these in the pull down must agree 100% with the materials that you have in your, if it's in your custom library or um, the inventor library, whichever, but they must appear uh, case-wise, spacing, uh, everything, or else inventor will just say that it does not exist. Um, so um, what I did is I moved on further and I created a couple simple rules. Uh, the first one is nothing uh, more than um, I have my three parameters and I'm rounding them to a sixteenth and then formatting them as a fraction. I uh, go to my system snippets and use my iProperties uh, description snippet. So it's adding to the iProperties value um, the description that I have placed. So within parentheses I just placed a uh, plate and then I have my um, my values as I have formatted them. So this uh, this works uh, rather effectively. Uh, as for material, uh, it doesn't get much simpler than just my I properties material, and I selected my um, user parameter 
and the pull down. So this works just great. So I can go back to my assembly and I can continue to place uh, iLogic components. So um, let's just uh, select a simple straight pipe and I'll just place uh, a few instances of these. And again, uh, I can select uh, the size that I want and the material and we'll go with 304 stainless and we'll make these 46, uh, we'll say half. And we'll apply those and you'll see that my description comes up just the way I want to see it. Now I'll add uh, one more and uh, I'll just use a knee brace and um, I select this one only for the fact that um, this one can be uh, rather involved and uh, I like this one because it does save me a great deal of time. Um, and uh, a couple other things. Uh, it saves me a lot of time but it also allows me the opportunity that in my pull down list I, can, I will only include um, the multi-value list of anything that my purchase department can purchase so that way I'm not going to have a modeler or someone choosing something like uh, 4 by 4 by 3 quarter inch square tubing which does not exist and my purchase department cannot get it so the selections available are only going to be those that uh, are obtainable so this cuts out a, uh, another possible route for error. And uh, as, um, as before, same thing with my material. And I apply, and my description comes up uh, just as I want to see it. So I'll just place two. Now, um, the one nice thing about this, uh, you're going to see that it's only taking the file name and adding a um, suffix to it. So it's uh, 0, 01. Uh, in the pipe case, I have 0, 01, instance 1, 2, 3, and then um, my knee brace. If I should put another plate in here, it's just going to say iLogic plate 02, uh, colon 1, or 03 as I place them. So in the second part of this uh, demo, we're going to show how, um, how we can maybe make these unique parts. So how did I make some of these other parts? Well, let's, um, let's take a look at the pipe. Now this is probably the easiest of uh, another easy one, and we certainly could have used this straight out of um, Content Center, but again, it would not have placed automatically, have placed my, um, my description and my material. And let's not forget that we can get a lot of other things placed in here. Any of these other uh, I properties we can have automatically slotted in um, with our our form. So let's uh, let's take a look at the pipe selection rule. Now this one may be a little bit more involved. All I do is have a if then else statement, and in here I have created my um, my pipe size, and I have placed every pipe size that I want available and um, it's uh, just a text field and in here is uh, has to completely match how I have my multi-value list so what it does it runs through the if then else if then else statements until it finds the text field that matches so in my case it'd be a four inch schedule 40 it'll apply the parameters the OD and wall thickness and then all I'm doing is using a, um, a rounding feature for my overall length and my I properties value description I place my description and the pipe length so I do this if then else for all my ish, all my instances I just do a you know a simple uh, control C copy and paste and then I'll go through and change uh, the parameters and descriptions as needed. Uh, it takes just a little bit of time, but it goes rather quickly and saves a lot of time on the back end. Uh, 
And the same can be said for my knee braces, which I think saves a great deal of time for the fact that these can be a little bit um, difficult to build. Uh, there's a lot of work planes and uh, work axes. So in order to get these shapes from time to time, um, I don't want to have my modeler sit there and build this over and over again, or even take an old one and, and fix it up. I mean, this is just too easy to go in there and and place a brand new one, utilizing a form, putting in the sizes you want. Uh, I mean, it takes seconds and it's done. So the nice part about this is um, I have my assembly. If I go in and create a, um, a simple drawing, my goal here is to see how my bullet material is going to work out. So I'm just going to place it. I'm going to go to annotate and select my parts list. I will select my assembly parts only. And let's just let's just place this and you'll see right away that um, my parts list is made up the way I want. I have my item, my quantity, my description, and my material. And you'll see right away that it has the parts and quantities with the descriptions. Uh, just the way I want to see them so it's uh, it works great for me uh, this especially in projects where I have some structural materials plates and elbows and pipes and a few other things that I have created um, this goes rather quickly so as I pointed out before one of the eventual difficulties with this method is that you use if you use a data management system that requires unique names, you may run into trouble with the place iLogic components uh, naming convention of the file name. Let's take a look. Um, with a simple suffix added of 01 or 0203. Um, in part two of this video, I will show you how to use iLogic design copy to make your parts and assemblies unique. So this is Dave Briner, hoping you have a great day. Uh, till later.